What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are gonna be going over the onboard air setup that is on my Jeep currently, so stick around. Now before I go through how this particular setup works, it is currently not working and I bought a Smitty built uh, compressor that I just throw in the back of the Jeep and I have not looked at this to figure out what the issue is with it. So once I show you how I have it set up, we'll go through, try and figure out what's wrong with it and then try and fix it because I'm kind of tired of pulling out the Smitty built air compressor and you know, connecting it to the battery and getting the hose out and everything. It's kind of a pain when I have a perfectly good onboard air setup on the Jeep that I just need to fix. So the basics of this system is a factory AC compressor, which is right here. It has basically a pressure switch set up right here from, I would say it's basically just a similar to your stand up air compressor that you'd have in your garage. You can buy them super cheap on Amazon anywhere from $15 to I think this one is like a 50 or $60 one. So we have our connections on the back. These ones are from a website. I will leave a link in the description. It's basically for servicing your AC compressor, your AC systems, you swap these out. We have a cheap little air filter right here, probably I think from like a little motorcycle carburetor or something like that, uh, that sucks into here, compresses, and then it goes out through this AN fitting and basically like a fuel line, just an a generic AN line. Uh, these are Earl's fittings, uh, which are pretty expensive and kind of nice. And it just goes to this generic, I believe this is like from a, a semi truck, like maybe a three gallon, two and a half gallon, like an airbag tank. And it's just mounted to the fender. And our outlet is on this side. And that's what ties into our pressure switch down here. So the pressure switch is right there, which also ties into where our fitting is right here. So I attach my hose just right here. And if we come around inside, it's controlled on the inside with uh, my smash door. Still need to fix that. That's It's controlled with my aux beam uh, eight switch right here. It's running through the factory AC compressor relay wiring from the factory. And I just tapped into that and there we have our air right there. This turns the clutch on the AC compressor on. Super simple, super easy. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, doesn't the AC compressor need some sort of oil to run and uh, not get destroyed? Well, uh, yes, you are correct. That is 100% true. This does not have an oiling system. That is one of the things that it doesn't have. And just to be 100% clear, I did not do this. This was on the Jeep when I bought it 13 years ago. This is the same AC compressor that was on the Jeep when I bought it 13 years ago. It might have been more than 13 years ago, 14. It was a long time ago. And uh, I used it kind of a lot. And the guy that I bought it from, he's like, yeah, you can just go to the junkyard and just buy another one of these for like 20 bucks and you just swap it out when it goes bad. And you just take the, the intake off, this little air filter off, and you turn the compressor on and just run a crap ton of WD-40 through it. So that's what I've done one time a year. Actually, I did it a lot less than I should have. I just pop the air filter off and just run a bunch of WD-40 through it and run the air chuck to blow out any kind of oil or water that would get in this tank. And I've taken this tank out maybe once or twice to see if there's any water in it and it is bone dry. So that is all good. So I can't remember exactly what is going on with it. I know that this pressure switch is intermittently not working. So I can see it's just covered in dust and dirt and grime. I've never cleaned it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this pressure switch out and see if I can get it to work properly again. And then we will take the air filter off and run a crap ton of WD-40 through it and hopefully it will start working. I believe, I can't remember exactly, but I remember I heard an air leaking noise and it was not building pressure into the tank and the air compressor would turn on, but it was not building pressure. So I think either there's a leak or internally the AC compressor is bad because I think it was blowing air back out through the intake. I could be wrong. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up first, the pressure switch. Uh, I'm just going to blow it out with air, clean it, and then spray it down with a bunch of contact cleaner and uh, see what happens.
So we got our air intake right there. This filter I took off and it should be sucking air. And I know that it is sucking air, but I can also feel air getting pushed out of it. I can actually feel tufts of air as it's coming around. So I believe that what's happening is that it is building pressure and pushing some out through here. It's also leaking back past it and pushing back out through the intake. So as you can see, it's still working, but it's not building very much pressure because that pressure is going back out through this intake right here. So it's definitely internally inside the compressors. Let's go shut this off. Before I go and buy another one, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna actually tear this apart, tear it down and see what's going on inside. See if I can figure out maybe there's just an O-ring or something I could fix that's super cheap and easy. So for those of you that have not seen the inside of an AC compressor, it is has seven pistons in it. You can see them right here. And on this side, it has a wobble plate is what they call it. As it spins, it pushes the pistons in a circle around. So as it spins around, it pushes air through these one-way little valves right here. And it should close and not allow suction or air to go back out through the suction side but as you can see here there is a piece of fiber it looks like a piece of a gasket i don't know uh, what it exactly it is is holding that one-way flap open so it is no longer going to be effective and it's going to allow air to escape back out where it's not supposed to so hopefully if i just pop this piece out and reassemble everything it should work properly that's <laughs> I mean, this is about as simple as it gets. I just need to bolt this back together and bolt it back on the Jeep and it should be good to go. The other thing I noticed is this plate, I unbolted this, uh, that lets the air in in one direction. Over the years of abuse of it basically pushing up, flapping up against this little uh, you know, angled plate that only allows that much movement of this little plate there's a little bit of an air gap between all of them. So I think that over the years of abuse and use that these little tabs are just a little bit bent up. So all I'm gonna do is flip it the other way and hopefully that will fix the issue because now they're gonna be tended to bend down towards ceiling. Okay guys, we got everything all the way back together. All of our fittings are back on. I got new O-rings on both of these. Everything is reattached exactly how it was before. I actually moved this guy right here, the fitting that I'll be running. It used to just kind of sit right here because I don't want to have to open the hood every time. So what I did is I ran it through right here and put some conduit on top of it, zip tied it up there. And also I found this guy right here. This goes over the bolt, the nut on the front wheel for this. And I lost one of them already when I was at LB. And this fits perfectly over top of this right here. And it will keep the mud and the dirt and the stuff out of this fitting. And it'll keep it from rattling around in here and making noise. So I will be using that. That fits perfectly on there. Oh, it's on. It's way quieter than it was before. So I guess we'll just see if the pressure switch, it'll get enough pressure that it'll actually shut off. 
Ah, uh, it worked, it shut off. Oh wow, that's that's so much more powerful than before. It is 100% working. Woo! I just made a new hose out of this bulk industrial air hose, put a couple of Harbor Freight fittings on it, make it work. I know 100% I checked that it's gonna go from this one all the way to the rear tires. It's long enough, so it's perfect. I'll just get a bag to throw it into so I can throw it in the back of the Jeep or put it in one of my recovery boxes. It's gonna work out perfect. You guys could definitely piece this together and make it really, really budget friendly, probably less than 100 bucks. You guys could do this if you're really savvy. Kind of the air tank, and is the expensive part and this pressure switch depending on how you know you can go like $16 one this particular one that's on here that's been on here for more than 13 years is I looked it up it is it like 60 bucks so this is a more expensive one well guys that's gonna be it for this video thanks for watching if you want to check me out on social media I am at Muddybeards 4x4 we got a website you can uh, get discount codes for Barnes four wheel drive who makes really great products, bolt-on, builder's parts, stuff like that. You can get a discount code through the link below and uh, a bunch of other sponsors that you can get discounts for. All that's linked down below in the description. I will leave the link for the, the, the fittings that go on the back of this compressor that are about 26 bucks. I'll leave the link for that that I found and just to make it easier for you guys because I think that particular part is gonna be the hardest part for you guys to try and track down. So I found it, I'll put it in there for you guys. And until next time, guys, we'll see you on the trail.